Hey guys, Will Boyles of Will's Meals. Welcome, welcome. I get to show you today how you're going to make all the food that you see here for less than a US $10 bill. A full chicken, two breasts, two thighs, two wings, two legs, green beans, couple baked potatoes, couple bowls of chicken stock, and not one, not two, but three, but four, eight, nine, 10, 11, 11 bowls of chicken and rice soup, each with rice, chicken, carrots, and celery in the bowl. All right, all of that for less than $10. Are you ready? Let me show you how to get started. All right guys, Will Boyles of Will's Meals back with you and today I'm going to show you the first step of how you're gonna make all that food that I showed you for under $10. Our first step is going to be our chicken for $5.19. I'll show you a picture of the receipt. Um, this is about just under a four pound chicken. That's how we got it for that price. And our first step in making all of this food for $10 or less is going to be cutting up a whole chicken. So depending on what type you buy, the gizzards, the neck, and the chicken may come in a, uh, a little plastic bag or something like that. This one, I've already, I've already washed this out, I've already cleaned it up. And I'm gonna save all that for our stock, for our chicken broth. It'll eventually make uh, that chicken stock I showed you, and it'll eventually make all of those bowls of our chicken and rice soup. So our first step is we're gonna cut these legs and thighs off of the carcass. I like to be careful with the skin on the carcass here, because when your chicken is frying, when your chicken is baking, you want that skin on there during that process because it's just delicious. It's really it's an excellent uh, seasoning for your chicken. All right, while holding this thigh, not necessarily the leg, that's connected to the thigh, but you're gonna see a little flick here. And what that's going to do is that's going to separate the thigh from the carcass of the chicken. All right, you can probably see that thigh bone sticking up there. And now again, protecting the thigh skin. All right, I'm going to cut that off. I'm just cutting off the thigh. There we have a thigh and a leg. You see how we protected the skin. All right, and this is called a leg quarter. The thigh and leg connected are a leg quarter. And I'm gonna show you how to separate that later. It's just as easy to separate these as it was separating the chicken while holding the thigh to separate the thigh bone from the carcass. All right, that's our thigh bone there. And again, protecting the skin that's around the thigh, I'm going to cut the chicken thigh from the carcass. See that skin, I'm using the tip. And here we have two leg quarters, first easy step. I'm showing you with kitchen uh, shears because I figure a lot of you are probably beginners and it's a lot easier to cut up a chicken, especially for beginners with chicken shears versus a knife. Plenty of videos out there on using a knife. If you're already good with a knife, you know, you can certainly do that. But I think for beginners, it's good to use poultry shears versus a knife to cut it up. So here is our two leg quarters. So when you're looking at a wing, think about how your chicken wings look at the store or buffaloes or whatever the case may be. And I'm going to similarly help pull the wing off the same way I did the thighs from the carcass. You'll have to dig in here a little bit to get to, to the ball to the end of the wing. And like if I'm cutting up here, boom, boom, I'm cutting in the bone, right? All right, if you're cutting the bone, you're doing something wrong. We want to cut into the cartilage where that thigh bone connects to the chicken carcass. So here we have one wing. All right, and the wing's connected to the chicken breast. You know, protecting that skin around the wing, which is connected to the chicken breast, and you definitely want to keep that skin on your uh, your two chicken breasts here because that's good cooking. And again, I'm going to kind of dig in to this white in a little, going around the bone. Right there is the bone. If you're cutting in the bone, you're doing something wrong. You want to cut the cartilage off, which is connecting. So here we have our two leg quarters and our two our two chicken wings. And here you're going to see these are your two chicken breasts here, then this is like the main carcass of the chicken. Notice the fat line here. On this side of the chicken breast, there's another fat line here, one on that side of the chicken breast. Kind of use that as your pattern, like your uh, building model when we were kids, or a sewing pattern, if you've ever sewn anything. You can see how I'm just going by that uh, fat line, and that's my pattern. Here's my fat line over here. Again, let me protect that skin, see how some of the skin is pulled up from the chicken breast. You want that skin on the uh, chicken breast to use the tip of your poultry shears. Go along that fat line, 
Nice, easy snips. Take your time. Hopefully I'm not going too fast either for beginners here. And here we're going to have our chicken breast. Just gonna pull it down low. I'm not using much effort at all. All right, here's the carcass of the chicken. Look how much meat is left on that carcass. Okay, this is gonna go into our stock pot to make our chicken broth and to make the base, the base broth for our chicken and rice soup and many other soups I'm gonna show you here in Will's Meals videos. Now just cutting the carcass off of the chicken breast, cutting the breast off the carcass. When you get to the breast area, there may be a little bit of bone you have to cut through the side of the cartridge. And again, there's your carcass and all that meat we're going to use. That's gonna make an absolutely delicious chicken broth for free. Was just in the store the other day. Um, we are here in Okinawa, Japan, working for the US government here in Japan. I was at the commissary, which if you're not military, the commissary is a grocery store for a uh, military. And I noticed a couple cartons of chicken broth, they were $4 a carton. I'm thinking to myself, you buy two cartons of chicken broth and that's how much we're gonna make in this meal. Um, that practically pays for the entire meal, for the chicken, green beans, baked potatoes, uh, chicken and rice soup, and the broth you're, you're going to have. Okay, just the cost of buying two cartons of chicken broth. Um, that's how much That's how much you're gonna save cooking the Will's Meals way. So again, I'm gonna use the tip of our kitchen on my chicken breast. Okay, just the tip. Now we'll go a little further. All right. And if you're strong enough, you can just use your sears, shears to cut right through. If you're not strong enough, let me show you what I recommend. If you're not strong enough to work, say we cut through this bone here, the kitchen shears. Most of you are probably gonna be strong enough to do it. If you're not, uh, this is the towel I use to pat the chicken. I like to save money, not, uh, not spend money. I wanna save, save you money to improve your life. Um, make sure there's no grease or fat on your hands or the knife for safety. And then just take your knife like this and you'll cut right through that bone. Okay. And now we're back to cutting our chicken. We've got the shears resting on the bottom of the cutting board. Okay, so here we have two legs chicken breasts right here. Next thing we're gonna show you is how to cut the thigh from the chicken leg. It will no longer be a leg quarter, it will be a drumstick and a thigh. So again, that fat line I showed you on the chicken breast, Here's the thigh that we uh, cut the cartilage off of the carcass of the chicken. Now here's a fat line that we're gonna use to separate the thigh from the leg. Now it may not be exact, all right, but feel around with your shears or your knife, if you're using the knife, and see again how we, see I'm not cutting through a bone there, that's just cartilage that's holding on, that's holding the thigh to the leg. Except for that again, I have the shears resting on the bottom of the cutting board so that I don't mess up my skin. And there you have a beautiful drumstick and a beautiful chicken thigh. Okay, same thing, let's grab our other one. And just for a review, we'll look at this, uh, our skin line right here. Okay, and that's the skin line we're going to use to separate the thigh from the bottom of the shears on the cutting board. That's the skin line we're gonna use to separate the drumstick from the, from the uh, leg. Now this one I gotta go just left of that meat, not much. See, I was hitting on the bone right here, the bone and the thigh. So I just go to the left of it to get to the cartilage. It's holding it together, boom. And I said this before and I'll say it again. If you're cutting through bone, except for the chicken breast, if you're cutting through bone, you're doing something wrong. All right, so you've just about completed, believe it or not, the hard part of making all that food for only $10. We've got a carcass here and all the gizzard in the neck of the chicken that's gonna be used for broth and stew meat for our chicken and rice soup. Two chicken breasts, two legs, two thighs, two wings. And what I like to do uh, to make my chicken and rice soup meaty, I'll take the largest chicken breast, which is this one, and I'm gonna cut just a little bit more off of this. Use my thumb, but we can go through, we can go through the bone. I'll show you again how to use the knife. We'll, uh, Cause that bone will be good for the broth. And we'll cut right through that. And I'm gonna add this piece of white meat to my stock pot to make our chicken stock. All right, next step, we're gonna season this puppy up. All right, our next simple step is we're going to season our chicken. I like to use a little bit of uh, oil spray. In this case, Pam spray. Your best economical option, most affordable option is gonna be the great value 
um, olive oil spray at Walmart if you want to use olive oil. We can't get that here in Japan. So this is from that military concert I was telling you about. I'm just going to spray this up. It helps marinate the chicken. You can see I'm not using much. I'm not wasting. I want to save you money, not waste your money. And it helps the seasoning stick. Now a lot of your recipes that you'll see on YouTube and you see online, they're going to talk about you got to use onion powder, you got to use garlic powder, you got to use this, you got to use that, and you have to go out and buy all these ingredients. For the new cook, for the new chefs out there, um, find your favorite chicken seasoning. I'm a heart patient, so I like the low sodium Mrs. Dash, and then I can control how much salt I put in because there's no salt, no sodium in Mrs. Dash. The only extra thing I add is that our family likes paprika. All right, so I'm just going to season this up with paprika and Mrs. Dash chicken seasoning. And I'm not getting bathed on this dash or this McCormick paprika. Again, we can't get the uh, like the great value brand or the generic brand you can get in the States. We can't get that in the concert over here. You can save yourself a lot of money um, buying. If I was in the States, I mean, I'm, buying, I'm using great value brand olive oil and paprika and things, and things like that. Now, the great value brand doesn't sell a sodium salt free. Um, chicken seasoning, so I will use that Mrs. Dash if we were in the States as well. All right, so we got that salad seasoned up. I'm gonna simply flip it over. All right, you know, that's the same towel I used to have off to uh, dry my chicken. I can see not a whole lot, doesn't take a lot using hardly any pan spray at all, not wasting anything. Let's go ahead and season up our chicken breast here. Remember that one's a little smaller because we're using some of the breasts for our stock and our chicken and rice soup. All right, so there we go. All right, my family likes paprika, so do I. So let's uh, go ahead and paprika this up. Okay. This is a newer paprika, so I don't get a lot of shake. <laughs> for wondering why I'm tipping it over and tapping it. There's so much in it, I'm not getting a lot of shake to get it out. Good. And like I said, I can control the salt. I'm going to use the salt free and not using much. That's not near as much sodium that's going to be in most of your chicken seasoning uh, seasoning jars. But if you're not a heart patient, you probably you probably don't care. They talk about the kernel has how many seasoning. Kentucky Fried Chicken has how many seasoning in the chicken and stuff like that. Just look at the ingredients on your favorite chicken seasoning, and you'll see most of those ingredients are there without you having to completely stock your pantry to make a delicious seasoning. All right, we're going to put this in a container. I'm going to seal this up. And you want to try to have this, you don't necessarily have to, but you want to try to have that set at least a couple, couple three hours um, before you start cooking it. Just to let the flavor really get in there. In my case, I'm gonna let this set overnight. And then this is going to be what we're gonna have for dinner tomorrow. All right, next step, while that is marinating up and it's seasoning and a little bit of olive oil spray, I'm gonna show you how to start your stock pot to make your chicken stock and your Chicken rice soup. All right, welcome back. Time to work on that stock that I'm telling you about that's going to be our, uh, it's almost like a free chicken stock <laughs> instead of having to buy it at the grocery store. And it's gonna be the basis for our chicken and rice soup as well. I've got quite about a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil in the pan here already. Um, probably, again, in the States now, you can, you can use the uh, Great Value brand. It's like the cheapest olive oil you're gonna get. It's only about a quarter cup of olive oil. So I'm going to get this on the stove, get the sucker cranked up. I'm going to put these onions in. All right. I'm going to put my celery and carrots in. And I just cut these on the same board, as you can see, that I carved my chicken. Just get some of that uh, good seasoning in the stock there. And we'll get this rocking and rolling. So the only thing I use in mind, there's people out there that are going to buy these expensive seasoning bags. And you need this, you need that, you need a couple bay leaves. Bay leaves are really affordable. So if you want to throw a bay leaf in there, you certainly can. Um, the commissary was actually out of them, so I couldn't, but they're, you know, they're a dime a dozen. They're really good. And once this gets cranking up, I'm gonna put my uh, chicken carcass in there. And one more thing I forgot to do on camera is I'm gonna dice up some garlic. So we're gonna have about a quarter cup of olive oil, um, half, quarter to a half of an onion, one, about one carrot and one or two stalks of celery, some garlic, and then we'll season it with our same uh, Mrs. Dash chicken seasoning and salt, okay? 
we're gonna fill it up with water, let it, let it come to a boil, right? And then let it simmer for about oh, an hour and a half, two hours. Get that bone, bone broth in there, and then you get the whole, uh, what they used to call the healing of the chicken soup from that, from that bone broth in your chicken. All right, so we'll pause here. I'll get some garlic in, throw the carcass in, fill it up with water, and we'll show you what it looks like boiling. Uh, vegetable ingredients in it. Again, it's about a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil, um, quarter to a half of an onion, one carrot, one or two stalks of celery in there. It's looking good. Let's go ahead and season this up as it heats up. This is just our um, this is Dash chicken seasoning here. And with Mrs. Dash, I can control the salt. So put a little bit of salt in there. You're definitely in your chicken broth now, you know, your your chicken and rice soup. You're going to want you're gonna want salt. Right, let's give that a stir. And I wish you could smell this. I wish you could smell how good this smells at home. Get that stirred up and then let's go to our chicken. This is our chicken carcass. The gizzards are in here, the heart, the lungs, the chicken neck in here, which are all really wonderfully tasting. They are. Let me get this just uh, a little ground up on each side, all of our ingredients with that carcass. And once we get all the good seasoning spread around there, okay, I'm gonna remove this from the heat. And so be careful with the grease of it. But if you're mixing water and grease here when, when you do this, so just be careful about uh, grease isn't gonna jump out to your pan. Mm -mm. A little cup of coffee while we're cooking, huh? Well, that's filling up, let me show you. Here's where we're at so far, money was. $5.19 cent chicken. The seasoning we're putting in is all the more paprika, chicken seasoning uh, and salt that we're using. I have 50 cents, it's probably not even that much for that amount. And then our uh, onion, celery, uh, carrot, a little bit of garlic, which is not on here to make our stock and our water, which is just about three. All of that, again, it's probably under a dollar. So you can see where we're at already in this process. And you're quickly learning how we're going to make all that food for under 10 bucks. All right, so here we go. All on the stove, let me crank it back up. Back up. I have it on high, just to uh, bring it to a boil. Like I said, once it boils, we'll leave the lid on, and we will let that simmer, just a little bit that chicken bone really become a great tasting bone broth. We'll let it simmer for about oh, an hour and a half or so. All right, and that will be our chicken stock for our chicken or rice soup and your free chicken stock. You don't have to buy it at the grocery store. So next step, when this is done, we're gonna let it cool, strain it, let it cool, and I'm gonna show you how the easiest way to take all of the meat off the carcass. That meat is gonna be used in your chicken or rice soup. All right, we'll see you next video. All right, we're back, and good news, our chicken carcass and our broth are thawed, so we're going to start taking the chicken off of the bone. I've got one plate here to put our good chicken on, another plate to put uh, some of the bone and cartilage on, okay? And the key here, this is a little bit of work, okay? A little bit, but I mean, anything worth having requires a little bit of work. So here, I'm just taking chicken off the bone there. So do me a favor, please don't get discouraged. Oh, this is so hard, I can't do this to make all this food for 10 bucks. Okay, um, you can, it's really easy. It just takes a little bit of work. So do this, do me a favor, when it comes to picking the, uh, the chicken off the carcass, this is the neck here, really good dark meat on the neck. When it comes to doing this, please do this about a half a dozen times before you give it up. You can put some music on. If you have an Echo Dot, you can have it play something for you. You can watch some TV, because it'll get to the point where you barely even have to look once you've done this several times. You'll just know by feel whether you're uh, getting into a bone or not. Like I can feel that and see the difference between the neck bone and the actual chicken that I'm getting off. And you see all this chicken here? Okay, all that is going into our chicken rice soup. And if you'll zoom back to the pan, that broth that's in the pan there, that's gonna be our stock. And uh, chicken broth for our chicken rice soup. All right, so when I'm finished picking the chicken off the bone, we'll be back and I'll tell you how to make the chicken rice soup. All right, next I'm gonna tell you how to make your two and uh, chicken broth. Some of the stuff you see when you in the stock pots, ladle spoons, this. That 
the screen uh, filters out of your chicken broth. If you want it completely, completely filtered, you can get something called cheesecloth at Walmart or at your grocery store. And you'll pop that cheesecloth over the top of your containers and that will completely filter out everything. And as for me, I actually like a little bit of this stuff in my chicken broth for recipes, etc. I think it's good. So this is all I use as a screen. Okay. And simple as that, easy as that. Once I pick the chicken off the bone and it's thawed, there is your two containers of chicken broth that essentially you got for free. So we're back. So the main ingredients, of course, are rice. This is about three quarter cups of jasmine rice. I've tried it before with a full cup and it just comes across a little starchy for me. This is the chicken that we took off the uh, carcass. So we're gonna go ahead and put our chicken, take our chicken off the carcass. I've got that all heating back up again. I'll put the rice in last. Celery, carrots, some carrots and celery. We've done our last scoop. Keep in mind it had onions in this from before, okay? I'm gonna grab a spoon real quick to stir the yummy up. Man, I wish you could smell this at home. This is so good. Here's our three quarter cup of rice. I'm gonna stir this up and let this cook about an hour. And at the end of an hour, we will have a delicioso chicken and rice soup. Before too long, I would taste it for salt content. See how much salt um, that your family and you are gonna want. Here's some more of that Mrs. Dash chicken seasoning. Okay, no paprika in this, no paprika <laughs> in the chicken or rice soup. Put some Mrs. Nash, a little bit of salt. Okay, you may want a little more salt in yours. Give it a stir. And kind of same as before, we're gonna wait for this to boil. Once it boils, we're gonna put a lid on it, let it simmer about an hour. And you've got delicious, delicious homemade chicken or rice soup. Now from our carcass cooling off, which is going to be our chicken stock and our chicken and rice soup, we're going to carry on to the meal, which is our baked butter fried chicken, BBFC. And with our baked butter fried chicken, we're going to have baked potatoes and green beans. I'm going to start the baked potatoes first. As our oven is preheated at 400 degrees, it's at 150 now, it's going to catch up to 400 degrees. Here's how I do baked potatoes. A lot of people say only stab them once or twice, but the idea is you want, watch you don't cut yourself now as you're doing this, but you want uh, these potatoes cooked clear through. You will not sacrifice any taste whatsoever if you poke several holes in these baked potatoes. I know the the old wives tale used to be, oh, I poke one or two holes in, you know, to get the steam out and this, that, but you actually want several holes in your potatoes. Some will put even more in than I did. That's a little uh, extra virgin olive oil in there to make it good. And you want the shiny side of the foil down towards the potato. Okay, shiny side towards the potato, the non-shiny side out. Here's another, we have already poked that. Let's get some uh, extra virgin olive oil, which if you remember I said earlier, the cheapest way to get this would be great value, olive oil. But here in Japan, we don't have a Walmart to run to and get that great, great value. All right, so we're gonna put our potatoes in our oven as it's preheated because we want the potatoes to be done. When our chicken's done. All right, now on to our, the key ingredient to our butter fried chicken is the butter in the pan. I wanna save you money, not cost you money. I did use a piece of aluminum foil. You don't have to use that. It just really makes cleanup a lot easier if you line the pan with foil. But if you don't want to, because you wanna save money on the foil, that's fine. So in the heating, we'll go our pan with butter in it. And we will move to the process of breading our chicken. So to bread our chicken, all right, I like to send all my flour through a sifter. This is a half a cup of all-purpose flour and a quarter cup of self-rising flour. All right, put that in my sifter. Let's sift her up. And then we will begin the process of breading our chicken. And as I season this, I might have my photographer stop because my wife's about to come in. <laughs> we probably shouldn't film during that time. So I'll be right back with you. Okay, we got our sifted flour all together. Got a little bit more of our uh, Mrs. Dash chicken seasoning, pap paprika, and a tad bit of salt in our bread. And here's how I bread my chicken for my baked butter fried chicken. Hit one side, hit the other side, hit one side. 
Hit the other side. All right, I fold my wings like this. So here's your, the wing that we cut off the carcass. Fold it just like that. Get one side of my flower, get the other side. And then we'll close the lid on our Tupperware Rubbermaid plasticware, shake it up just like the old shake and bake. chicken in the pan, mostly skin side down, okay? And you'll want some room in between so we can crisp up. This is a thigh here, as you can see, we're putting the thigh skin side down. All right, another thigh skin side down. Here are two winglets, white meat winglets. And last, by no means least, as we get some butter over here, on the bottom of the foil will be our big old white meat chicken breasts, skin side down. Okay, and we're gonna put them in our 400 degree oven for 30 minutes. And in 30 minutes, we're gonna take them out, we're gonna turn them over and put them in another, another 20 minutes. And this whole time, the baked beans are cooking, or excuse me, <laughs> the baked potatoes are cooking. And I'm gonna show you how to make the green beans to go with the meal. All right, I'll see you soon. Okay, next I'm gonna show you how we're going to do our vegetable side dish, which is going to be green beans. So then we'll have green beans, our uh, butter fried oven baked butter fried chicken, baked potato, and like I said, our veggies green beans. So, heat on medium high, the pan's still warming up. Got about a tablespoon of olive oil, about a tablespoon of butter in our pan. We're gonna get that rocking and rolling. And I've got a bag of green beans here. I paid like $1.98, somewhere between $1.98 and $2.10. I'm only gonna use half, half of this bag of green beans for my fam. And so as you know, we're right around a dollar in green beans. I prefer, we prefer lemon pepper seasoning. Okay, you can just whatever kind you want. Put some lemon pepper in there. And as it's coming up to heat, I'm gonna to put to help steam it, steam cook it, about a quarter cup of water. And then I'm gonna put my lid on, and when it comes up to heat, I'm gonna turn on the low and just let this sit low and slow for uh, 20, 30 minutes, and we'll be done. Looks like I'm about to turn them down the low. Do you see how they spruced up, so to speak? All right, I'm gonna green beans, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of butter with our lemon pepper seasoning. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn those down just above low to let them steam cook up the final 30 minutes. All right, here we go. With Ruby, our faithful dog, <laughs> watching over us, we're gonna pour our, pull our chicken out of the oven. And I think it looks pretty now. Wait till I turn it and it cooks another 20 minutes. Look at it. Can Kentucky Fried Chicken be so jealous? <laughs> Better be careful. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that or not. <laughs> but this is your baked butter fried chicken, BBFC. Get that big old chicken breast turned over. The white meat actually does not take as long to cook as the dark meat, but it's so much bigger, it all ends up working out in the long run. Okay, so here we go. Back in, we're gonna go in another 20 minutes and this will be done delicious. I'm looking at my potatoes in there, cooking up nicely. I'll see you in 20 minutes. All right, guys, here we go. Wait till you see the yummy, yummy for your tummy, tummy. Here's our chicken. If you want this at least, oh, 160. It'll cook up to 165. I think we're gonna be well over that. I'm gonna make sure my photographer doesn't get burnt here. And there we are. So we are, we are good to go. That's the biggest piece. I wish, again, I know I said this before, but I really wish you guys could smell, smell this straight out of the oven. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plate this chicken. 
And then we will be back with some more Will's Mills to finish up the meal. See you soon. All right, there you have it. There you have it. Now you know how to make oven butter fried chicken breast, uh, excuse me, a whole baked chicken. Two breasts, two pies, two wings, two legs, green beans, baked potatoes, 11, not one or two, but 11 bowls of chicken and rice soup, okay? And two containers of chicken stock. All of that for under $10. It's just about time to eat, so will you bow with me in prayer if you choose to? Your Heavenly Father, we bow before you. We thank you for this food. We pray you would use this bounty, Lord, that you provide us to give us strength, healing, nourishment, and encouragement so we better serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.